Hello. Oh, the farmer. What's going on? Hey, it's not Saturday. Yeah, yeah. It's I, Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I, I had um, I just started this um, this like a uh, show. Um, you know, it's like you can call in and I don't know. I have other people who uh, I don't know researching this stuff and we. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm gonna call um, next week. I'm gonna call uh, Tom see if he wants to um, talk on that. Who? Tom. Tom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's going on? I heard about that, um, I seen that post you put on Chile. I was watching a little news clip on it, and I suppose, like, a, um, it created a tsunami. I went on well, the it's, uh, it's obvious to me that yeah. symbolically, at least, mm-hmm. what they are trying to show is the destruction of intuition by attacking the spine. Chile is, of course, uh, the Andes Mountain, which uh, is DNA. Uh, The attack on Concepcion. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Meaning uh, creating new life with access to the spine is not what they have in mind. And then the second town, which was just down the road, was called Ascension, which basically is a blind thrust because it's an ascension, a pushing up Mm. of the land. The tsunami, uh, of course, has the word ami Mm -hmm. in there, friends. Two. Boy called Sue. No. Two in one. You. So uh, there, there's all kinds of connotations there. Why I, would they? Why would they do that to the new slave? Why would they make it without access to the DNA? I mean, because you're supposed to follow instructions. Yeah, but they've never been out of space, so there's going to be problems. That this, you know that those new slaves are going to have to solve, and that's, you can't do that from underground, and you know, telling them something you've never, you know, giving them instructions on some place you've never been. Well, you... uh, if you look at how Nassau does it, mm-hmm. Nassau sends people out into space, mm-hmm. they land on planets, then they, they uh, contact Earth, and tell them what they found and what the situation is. Mm -hmm. And then they wait for instructions Mm. uh, about what to do next. And back here on the ground, there are teams of engineers. uh, And if the problem is is something to do with mineralogy, well, it's those uh, engineers that go to work. If it has something to do with water, Another team of engineers goes to work, if, you know, whatever, if it's mechanical. So they they would be basically continuing the same kind of approach as as they are now uh, doing through through uh, NASA. Mm. They they don't believe that the intuitive aspect of things was needed for anything more than getting there. They uh, they provided help uh, to the Wright brothers in, in understanding the uh, uh, physics behind flying, and uh, they did the same thing with NASA, I would imagine. Uh, the human beings are, are are there basically because they are better than robots at at uh, manipulating things. If something goes wrong, mm-hmm. it's it's usually something that uh, if you had time, you could make a robot to do it. But under the circumstances of learning how to fly. 
It has to be somebody who can be given instructions and proceed to do it themselves. Mm. So in, in any event, what we have now is uh, uh, Haiti, which would, uh, if one were looking at the whole thing as a human body, would be approximately the belly button. It may be genitals. If it's referring to uh, black people uh, coming from Africa, uh, so it's it's the general area of birth that they're suggesting, while the spine is uh, suggesting more uh, the fact that uh, intuition is there, and Antarctica would be the brain. Atlantis. You call it you call it um SS Atlantis too. Yeah. Super slave. Atlantis. The new republic. Yeah. Atlantis two. Yeah. Basically you have to be looking at Antarctica as being a head. Uh, yeah, the brain. If, if you look at the shape of uh uh, Atlantis, the bunny uh, river. Antarctica, it's like a brain. Oh. It's got the cord coming down to the spinal column uh-huh. uh, in South America, yeah. Patagonia. And, uh, the heart is the shape of Greenland. So it's obviously out of place. Mm-hmm. Because the the heart should basically be located in some place like Argentina or Brazil. But in fact, since they're going to be killing all the people, uh, the most uh, likely place they'll start hearts beating again is Greenland because that's where they would have stored cells that contain eggs that could then be used for starting up a a new new body after the the destruction of the Earth. Um, Got to remember that that's a big fridge, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Two miles or so. The bowl. Yeah. Um, What was I going to ask you about? Uh, this um when they this you no know, I don't want it to happen or anything but how they plan to just destroy um <clears throat> everything except I guess those two pieces of land um the lifestyle you think is it'll probably be driven down to like what basic living. Well, the, people that the, the suggestion was always that uh, a group of people, uh, native people, uh, would would be left behind to uh, keep the land fallow, which basically means plowed but not seeded. Yeah, and, and the only people on the planet who uh, would be capable of handling that task and you got to remember, it'll be at a time when there's no more snow or ice. Mm-hmm. Uh, would be the Amish. Like I was telling um, Tom that like just picture a society like that, just 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 all Amish and how they would run their society. It'd be like the Middle Ages again. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be. But that would uh, only be temporary yeah. until such time as they were ready to. The new man is ready to come out. Kickstart the uh, beam in. Uh, and they'll be destroyed by what, like the the laser, you said, Hubble telescope? There, them. There is a process that requires um, destruction of people in the three phases. Oh, yeah. And then following the three phases is the... the um, specific targeting of survivors. The only way that you can really, in fact, target survivors 
would be by using something like the Hubble telescope turned pointed towards the Earth and and use the uh, the new uh, bay window they've just installed on the space station mm -hmm. to uh, direct it. It it could you know a telescope could be used in one of two manners one to spot things on Earth. Yeah, spot the moon. other thing is to focus sunlight so that it creates a beam. And that what they use to destroy the moon too. That thing. That could be used to destroy the moon, uh, and a laser could also be doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. The moon being just a rock, not an ordinary rock. It's its material suggests that it's from a comet, much like the sun, rather than being material similar to the Earth or Mars or Venus. Uh, it's quite possible that the moon had something to do with the breakup of what used to be Mars and Venus as a single planet. Mm came through and, and hit and then got captured within the gravity of Earth. What, what do you think it would be like if the Earth had, like, two moons? <laughs> well, I don't that. think uh, it, it would have two moons. Mm -hmm. uh, it would have a, a sun coming in to replace the moon, so that there would be light 24 hours a day. Alder Amin would basically be shining from about the direction of where the moon shines now, but would be much brighter, and therefore there would be no night. There would be no night, but you think even plants could survive that? No, right? there's no... Well... Uh, Only deep sea creatures... You, you have to remember, they're not going to be operating on the same principles we are. Yeah. Uh, all of their uh, agriculture will be controlled. It would be kind of a greenhouse activity, and, um, aquaculture, that kind of stuff. So they, they will not, in the end, need the land for that purpose. Uh, the food will be grown in, in buildings that are much like city-sized greenhouses. Yeah. And then they'll have, uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, city-sized robotic factories. Things are manufactured. If you look at that picture I have on my site of Atlantis, too. It, it's got those laid out there. You have kind of three mountains in the background. One is basically the launch pad. Uh, the other one would be the warehousing, and the third one would be the living quarters of the people who live in that area. Yeah, I see. Out, out in front are the greenhouses. In the industrial uh, aspects of robotic manufacturing, and they're they're basically kind of floating on water, and you can see uh, wharfs, piers sticking out where ships are are uh, docked, mm -hmm. and these are the ships that will carry. Uh, material and information back and forth between Antarctica and the new cap continent in the Arctic. There will also, of course, be submarines and, and that kind of stuff, and there, there could very well be communities located underwater. Uh, but all of the occupants would be female in appearance. Mm -hmm. There'd be no no male appearing there. The male is is really in charge of the body, and it lives inside the female. 
uh, in the way all uh, hermaphrodites do. The only difference is the female would not be making her own decisions. That would be the uh, responsibility of the communications computer high-speed system that comes through to give instructions to the medulla, mm -hmm. who then manages the operation of the body through its uh, uh, electrical and chemical systems, pituitary gland, endocrine glands, uh, all of the glands that manufacture uh, milk in the breast and that kind of stuff. Mm. It seems like this computer, um, like, it has all this knowledge and it's forever, whatever, but, um, because it can't, it's not, um, it can't walk around and it can... I suspect that it's on some kind of uh, track or levitation mechanism mm -hmm. and it's constantly on the move. Yeah, but I I I, don't, I think it's 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 missing something. Missing something like how it um how it looks at everything. I think it's missing. Well, it, it it's not missing anything that these people want it to have. You got to remember mm -hmm. that with all computers, it comes down to garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. Uh, if. If somebody's a control freak and he programs the computer to be a control freak, yeah. that's what it's going to be. A little megalomaniac. Yeah. Uh, but this, I mean, it, it has a will to live, it looks like, this computer. Well, it, it, it has a will to dominate. Because that's what it's been programmed to do. My opinion uh, decided that pro programmers had done such a great job, it didn't need them anymore. Yeah, it's like just carrying out its task yeah. for forever and ever. It will just, and I guess its goal is just to dominate everything possible in the universe. And yeah, and all new information arrives and goes to the first computer, Boaz. And it examines that information and decides whether or not it is acceptable to its existing programming. Mm. And if it is, it passes it on to the second computer who then includes that information in their uh, manuscripts that they then put out as, as instruction manuals for their slaves. First computer discards anything that that basically tells it to change its program from being uh, a control freak to being a nice guy. You know. So, do you think it would be better off to just destroy it or reprogram? Computer? Well, uh, because it has within it all of the information from the beginning of time mm -hmm. that was collected by. Neanderthalers or any other uh, intelligent species, and that, with, that might include things like whales mm -hmm. and uh, other mammals that live in the ocean. Penguin being basically the symbol of of something that always comes home to Antarctica mm -hmm. to uh, to give birth. Uh, you. you there, there is a, a benefit to having that computer, uh, but it's also a danger that uh, uh, its program overrides anything that you put in there that you want to change its its mission. So. Uh, it's it's something that would have to be left to the the physicist to decide, uh, but I I have no doubt that the first step would have to be to pull the plug. Yeah. Then you can at least go around 
uh, cleaning up the act on the surface and and with its uh, its managers mm-hmm. make sure that they don't interfere with any changes in the future mm-hmm. and it might be decided that uh, uh, parts of its information can be extracted from talk about hard drives or whatever <laughs> I'm sure that's not how it functions would be much more advanced than anything we even can imagine. If if it can be basically uh, rebuilt in a manner that could retain its information, its knowledge, without retaining its mission, then there might be a benefit to to having it around. Uh, Otherwise... uh, can't take a chance yeah. that it repeats what it's been doing. You know, so. <laughs> it's all a, a, a very interesting and challenging project. Mm-hmm. Of course, it can't. The the actual work cannot be done by thirteen people. No, thirteen people can only be the critical mass that that competes with the critical mass uh, on the other side for the attention of the masses. In the end, the masses, uh, if they have uh, intuitive aspect added to their decision-making process, I'm sure would switch sides. Mm-hmm. Quickly enough. The, the problem is today uh, they are basically acting only on the things that they've been taught, not the, the material that is intuitively uh, fine, but that they don't know how to access. Some people, you could see they know things intuitively, but they just don't know what to do. Yeah. Well, it usually comes down to energy. Mm-hmm. We have uh, uh, metabolic energy. Depending on whether we have enough or not, often determines the challenges we take on. Uh, if you have a uh, a problem that requires a large gas tank, you don't have one, you probably would choose uh, to stand by and let somebody handle the job rather than take it on on your own. Nervous energy uh, also applies. That's that's like the foot on the gas pedal. Yeah. You always have to think of people as having uh, these two competing forces, the metabolic energy, like the gas tank, somebody could have a small one, a medium-sized one, or a large tank. So the more they have, the more they can do. But it's also balanced off by the uh, nervous energy, which is the foot on the gas pedal. Some people who have a light foot on the gas pedal Mm -hmm. uh, can sometimes do as much with a small gas tank as somebody with a big gas tank but a heavy foot on the pedal. So it's it's each individual you'll meet in life uh, has to be uh, basically uh, understood or overstood mm-hmm. by who they are, not by what you'd like them to be. Mm-hmm. Energy is the key. You know, I, I speak to all the people, and a lot of them, you know, some of them have a lot of information in there, but they just don't understand that information. Yeah. And but if if they had 
um, a way of being given access to their intuition that would change. Yeah. That that would uh, bring them to that point of overstanding, where they would know reality needs intuition along with reason uh, to be deciphered. But uh, that doesn't mean they would act upon it because then the next step is do they have the energy to take on the task uh, that is needed, whatever task specific role they undertake. So how we decipher reality compared to Original people, would you say we've progressed? Or? You, you mean us today, uh, you and I, or the masses? <laughs> I, I, um, you're, you're not talking about the same, same <laughs> thing here. You know. I guess uh, you and I. Like, uh, uh, we we would uh, probably be closer to the original people the original clan mothers more than the original clan men because the clan men were more task specific but what we're, we're talking about is the bigger picture and that was basically the task the, the duty of the clan mothers who would see the long range applications of their decisions and uh, what would benefit the clan as a whole rather than them as an individual. Mm -hmm. I suggest that if anybody is doing what we're doing, uh, that suggests at the same time that our thought processes are more uh, related to the way clan mothers work. Thinking about the whole rather than yeah. just... Okay. So they had um, before the Ice Age, uh, the, the clans. They had like archives, right, of observations and you know, yeah. history and stuff like that. Well, it, it, it's obvious uh, if one studies the evolution of human beings mm -hmm. that if you start off with a hermaphrodite and you end up with genders, and that the scientists who tell us when that happened are suggesting about 80,000 B.C. Um, that process itself could not be achieved by individuals with a, a fork and knife and, and yeah. hammer. It would have to be somebody that has access to a memory bank much larger than what a human being can carry. That suggests they had computers at that time. And that's not an impossibility if you're considering that women, uh, clan mothers, began at about 115,000 B.C. and men didn't appear till 80,000 B.C. You're dealing with 35,000 years there. So 35,000 years is a long time. Mm -hmm. When we compare what we have, in fact, changed planet in the uh, 300 years from 1650 A.D. to 1950, for example, you you are going from a a feudal society that has no technology all the way through the technological age until you arrive uh, at the end of it and at the beginning of the age of computers and communications. And what, what was the reason for this that, that big jump in such a short period of time? Somebody provided uh, hints. The Medici family Italy, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's as a result of the the uh, Crusades, 
moving towards the uh, Crusades in the 11 and 1200s, moving towards the journeys of Marco Polo and his family to China, and the bringing back through Persia of uh, information that had been known previously in in China, Mm. and them agreeing to uh, park themselves, not to participate any longer in the uh, technological uh, study, but instead pass the task on to Caucasians in return for fees, taxes, duties, permits, uh, insurance, gambling, Mm. so that whatever it was that we did, and no matter how successful we would be, we would only be allowed to retain the type of uh, incomes and uh, resources that we needed to do the job. And they would be constantly stripping uh, the excess away back to hide in the the big bank uh, someplace, probably in the the mountains of Tibet or someplace like that, Mm. uh, so that uh, we would be constantly motivated by the fear factor that they include with their system are uh, divided into three categories. People who live a wealthy life without work. Mm -hmm. People who do the work and are marginal in their uh, ability to survive. And people who are poor and have no work and and the fear factor is when you're in the middle, mm-hmm. you're always hoping you can reach the top and change classes, mm-hmm. like the Kennedys did, for example. But more important, you're more worried about ending up as as uh, bag ladies on the street looking for a place to live. <laughs> Or, or bums living under a bridge someplace. You know? <laughs> um, that's why they leave them on the bottom. Um, yeah, it's they to have keep, to leave them there. To keep that fear yeah. ingrained in people. I, I look at it like this, like, um, I always use this analogy, like, like picture a big stadium and there's like a, a person dressed in jewels and gold and Everybody's looking at this person and, and, you know, groveling and all, but they don't see the little track behind him outside that leaves them an, an, like an exit outside the place. They don't see they don't see that because um, they're so infatuated by being rich, but they don't see. Cause I think there's more, like, freedom, like, for poor people. Yeah, well, um, they, the... The system basically gets the the people who are uh, holding the money mm-hmm. uh, to be uh, imagining and seeing with their own eyes evidence of a hidden hand that's hiding in a mitt, mm-hmm. controlling everything, when in fact they should be looking for the hidden feet Mm-hmm. that are down below their their own feet uh, <laughs> who are in fact controlling and and if you had to put uh, a name on those feet they would be uh, linked to gambling the most important gambling operation in the world is called insurance yeah. You are basically giving money to somebody who extorts from you funds based upon their promise that they won't do to you what they're protecting you from. <laughs> if the whole economy were to crash, or whatever, how would insurance help anybody? 
They they certainly won't if <laughs> if everything is crashed. They'll just do what they did recently. They'll say we're on the brink of bankruptcy, and you have to provide That's more cool. taxes <laughs> to us so that we can survive to protect you from us. <laughs> That that's just sounds crazy, but they are crazy. <laughs> that's like here, the, the here mafia. In, <laughs> here in Ontario, we have a, a process by which the Ontario Provincial Police give out phony tickets to people who find it easier to plead guilty yeah. than to fight it. Mm-hmm. And when they plead guilty, the insurance companies add a second amount to the amount they have to pay, Mm -hmm. and the police don't realize that the money is being used to promote a system that intends to destroy them first by putting their headquarters directly at the base of the potential flow of uh, water in a cataclysmic way out of the Great Lakes straight down over their head because their head office was positioned to be destroyed immediately. But try to explain that to a policeman Mm -hmm. who all of my experience suggests their training is not uh, in the protection of the citizens, but in in taxing and and tolling the citizens and treating the citizens in a manner not very different from what the criminal section does uh, and and that they are manufactured people basically from uh, a laboratory uh, people who are uh, revived reseeded mm-hmm. uh, family upon family of policemen mm-hmm. so that their their mental thought processes but are are police. basically hubris mm-hmm. arrogance yeah. of power so they're they're criminals in in, a in, uh, in nature yeah. because they are robots yeah. it's like it's not their fault mm-hmm they are not able to figure that out. They've been programmed like robots, and therefore they can't see the ridiculous situation they are in and use the power that they have to continue to inflict pain upon their parents. Of course, each policeman says, I would never do anything to my parents, but I'll do it to your parents. <laughs> and the policemen who came from the family of your parents are doing it to my parents. Really stupid, but mm-hmm. if if you think of it, something like a big warehouse with food in it, mm-hmm. and and it's being controlled by the puppeteer. The hidden hand. And the puppeteer says to your children, if you work for me, I will give you food and you'll never be hungry. And you say, what do I have to do? And the hidden hand says, you have to keep your neighbor's family from coming and taking food even though they're hungry. Then they go to your neighbor and they say, you have to keep your neighbor, me, from <laughs> going in. So it's it's a... You're talking about like a police state. like this. It is. Yeah. We all live in police state. Yeah. Policemen are the pawns on the chessboard. How about Whereas the other guys? Like, the uh, mafia and the military are the knights. They're, they're on the back row. Yeah. They're there with the bishops mm-hmm. and the cardinals and the queen and, and the king and the, the 
the uh, civil servants who occupy the the castles on the corners there, which are basically government. So how about these guys like the like federal agents, CIA, those all those? Say that they're just policemen yeah. with task specific roles. Yeah. Some some uh, are are basically you know, policemen who who give you tickets on the highway so that they can collect fees and taxes beyond what you agreed to pay. But they also need another group of policemen who spy. Yeah. That's uh, the the insiders uh, nationally. You would call them in the U.S. FBI, internationally CIA. Mm -hmm. uh, call them uh, nationally Royal Canadian Mounted Policemen. <laughs> Because they have so many of those, they they have like new groups that they just form all the time. It's like, and they just, you know, they're always, you know, stepping on each other's toes. That's like government, you know. Government yeah. departments change their ministers, their secretaries on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So nobody can be asked a question. When they are asked questions, they say, I don't know, I'm new on the job. <laughs> and as soon as they've spent you know, a little bit of time where they should know something, they're transferred out. And, uh, mm -hmm. When it really gets tight, you know, then uh, uh, they retire and, and pass the, the mantle on to the next yeah. person that has been trained to replace them. John Rumsfeld appointed his uh, replacement mm -hmm. uh Two years before he resigned, huh. the the political parties changed in between, but they didn't change okay. his replacement. He's he's still there managing affairs. So these guys that you say these like police, um, so say when they you know when they a policeman goes for the job. Uh, to be a cop, um, are they actually taking like his DNA and seeing if that's what they, is the appropriate? Like, um... Yep, they they can read before he comes on board or, or she comes on board recently. Mm -hmm. Exactly who they are, and and uh, that they have a historical presence in that kind of task it's it's the whole principle of uh, the valkyries mm -hmm. the valkyries are mm. supposed to be women yeah. who go on the battlefield pick up the hero's dna and bring it back so that it can be reconstituted they say at the end times Mm -hmm. But in fact, it's it's reconstituted as they need it in order to add to the police force. Yeah. So, I mean, the the actual uh, programming of this person is is not much different than the programming of someone in the military that follows instructions and gives instructions, or the mafia that doesn't follow instructions and don't allow anybody to give them instructions. Hmm. And it's a kind of a version of these people that is made for the front line. And there are, they are, policemen are basically throwaways. Yeah. You use them and you don't give a damn what really happens to them. Well, you see them on the chessboard, they show you yeah. they're like meant to die. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, they just they it's just... like the 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 privates in the military. Mm -hmm. They called them dyers for the sun. Yeah, exactly. Soldiers, dyers, solve. Yeah, but speaking of the Valkyries, it's interesting. Um, in the movie I watched, um, Hitler, uh, the actor who was Hitler, he said, um, he said, if you do not understand Valkyries, then you won't understand. National Socialism. Yeah, of course. 
because they are the end product of Nazism when you know what Nazism really is. It's fascism. Uh, sometimes it's spelled N-A-T-S-I, and Pakistan, Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, and all those other is fans. Yeah. And sometimes the letters are changed around and they come out sounding like saints. Saints being the same letters as used in Nazis, and sometimes they come out as uh, ain'ts. <laughs> I ain't going to do it. <laughs> I, I ain't following your advice. That's basically the motto of the Democratic Party. Yeah. <laughs> Republicans always tell people what to do, and uh -huh. Democrats said, say they ain't going to do it. And I, also the word tame. Yeah. And Thames is the the middle back sheet on on a piece of glass that turns it into a mirror. Like, yeah, I see it in the it's word Christian. Mirror image. Like it's in that word Chris, Christian. Christian. Right hand, left hand. Uh, you know, two nostrils, two two parts, to the lungs and heart and whatever it's. You can never depend on one to do the job consistently, so you got to have that tennis ability yeah. where you can pass it's like a band power of over to one side and, and yeah. people get frustrated. Yeah. By the time they get really pissed off, uh, power is transferred to the other side and you got to start all over. That's yeah, so, oh, the concept of marriage yeah. <laughs> being with somebody. Yeah. yeah, but with the Germans, I, I, I remember reading... On um, like they when you go back to the history, like cause with like in in the in the world of like ritual sacrifice of human sacrifice, they were really into that, and that and then I realized that um that when they had the concentration camps, that was just them following tradition yeah. when they did all it, that. It's all ritual. Yeah. And it's all based upon the lessons learned from the beginning. And and human beings uh, were not born the way they are today. They went through a process of being just like the other animals, survival of the fittest and, and cannibalism and all of those things. Mm -hmm. So because we don't see that stuff in public anymore, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Yeah. And, and of course, the the biggest joke about Valkyries is that the the system sells you the the idea that they are women. <laughs> They're not women. They are we men disguised within a uh, uh, mask of uh, of woman. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a veneer put on the outside of a male. That's why the Olympics exist is is to figure out exactly how the structure of a male uh, doing a very specific task can be replicated within the structure of female. Mm -hmm. So it's it's basically a merging of the two. And that's all of the hints that you got through the Olympics. Not just in Vancouver, but it's always the same thing. It's, uh, most people who misunderstood the purpose of the Olympics thought from the beginning that it was all uh, intended to make the perfect male. And that couldn't be further from the truth. But that's how, because when you look at the history of the Olympics, that's how it started out. It evolved to different tasks. What they had to do was find out what a male can do mm -hmm. physically. And then, what does a female do physically? And now, mm -hmm. it's how you can take what a male can do 
mm-hmm. and change the female interior to bring her as close to a male without changing the outside shape of the female. So when you look at these athletes that are uh, female but six foot two, mm-hmm. look like you know shoulders like middle linebackers. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't have to even be big. You can look at skaters and and think of the strength that it takes to lift a person over your head. And, and hold that other person up there. And, and you see that all the time with skaters. So it's, yeah. there's much more to it than simply muscle. There's the shape of the bones, the length of the bones in relationship to the body, the joints, the ligaments. Uh, all of these things are task-specific. Tiger Woods uses different muscles mm-hmm. and bones than than does a skater, for example. And and you can't have just one kind because then there's some tasks that won't get done. Yeah. So you got to start with this is a task. I need a person to do that task, and then the computer will tell you, well. That person should be of this height, that weight, this type of bone structure, that type of joint, that type of uh, lungs, that type of heart, that, and, and so on. And, and then the computer will make from the existing genome, subdivided into all of its different categories, will assemble what is required, like a cocktail by a waiter at a bar, mm-hmm. and and then insert it into the the shell of what used to be a female egg, uh, so that it can then be artificially inseminated and and introduced into a, a um, surrogate mother, whether that surrogate mother be a machine or a sea cow or a female is is basically irrelevant. It it's what will happen to it once it gets there and what are the chances of survival. And some are made by being introduced in females through artificial insemination. And some are made in a zoo type atmosphere where uh, Nea- uh, not Neanderthalers, but uh, sea cows of uh, type manatee, uh, walrus, that type of animal, mm-hmm. can in fact carry a um, zygote to fruition. Uh, some are made strictly in, in the laboratory. Uh, some kind of in- incubator, and those three types of people are running around the world today, and you don't know who they are by looking at them. In in the end, they will all be female in appearance. At this stage of the game, some of them are male in appearance, mm-hmm. and some are female in appearance. Mm-hmm. But uh, in the end, uh, you, there will be no males. The, the and these people are in positions of power, or yeah, well, they're basically being manufactured to handle every task. Mm. So part of that is political, part of it is religious, part of it is police, you know, whatever task yeah. that is required. Because mm, I, I was looking at um one of the. F- a CEO of Kraft, yeah, the Kraft Corporation, Kraft Foods, mm-hmm. and I was Just talking. Just a raft with a K in front. Yeah, yeah. And the Kraft is also that spacecraft that's going mm-hmm. up in the space. But see, um, I was act. I was talking to a guy who worked, and he said that that lady was like really, like a really. Uh, I guess intelligent lady, 
Sure. And she was really like all about her work. Yeah. Just like she was spread to be. A task specific slave, yeah. whether it be a president of a company or a nation, mm-hmm. on the one hand, and or uh, somebody that stocks shelves. Yeah. Uh, can be manufactured, and it's it it's not because one is uh, intelligent and the other one is not. Mm-hmm. It's just one is programmed in a way to use intelligence, and the other one is programmed in a way to use physical attributes of lifting, you know, crates of of food and stocking shelves and bags of flour and all of that stuff. So when you have a, a person with a mindset like that, that's just all about their work and yeah. serve the master, what happens when they just see that, you know, that reality is just not as it is? <laughs> because they put a, pop, a lot of propaganda, you know, they feed us a lot of this propaganda to yeah. For us to accept this and work. Well, I, I don't know um, what it's like in your part of the states, mm-hmm. but I know that uh, in many places in Canada, they have been using uh, people uh, on which they inflicted Down syndrome mm-hmm. uh, for the purpose of menial labor. Mm-hmm. In, in places like grocery stores, stocking shelves, mm-hmm. uh, loading bags at the counter, taking them out to the cars, washing the floors. And I've spoken to a number of these people, and they're, they're really uh, happy when they're doing their job. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they're not hanging around looking for time to go home to the wife. They're they're uh, really would like to be able to live in the store, yeah, yeah, not have to go anywhere, and so that they could do their job every minute of every day. So uh, it's it's not an illness; it's a program, and it's some get dumbed down and some get dumbed up. (laughs) (laughs) You know. And if you get dumbed up, well, you become a Hillary Clinton or yeah. you know Margaret Thatcher or Golda Meir. Or, you know. oh, man. But they, the package they've discovered along the way, the physical appearance of the person uh, is as important as any of the physical attributes that it has. Uh, or mental attributes, if its job is uh, involves marketing or selling an idea or a concept, and the, the place they do that most is uh, by presenters, they call them, um, in the media. They, they basically uh, read the news, run the, the news programs, uh, uh, from behind the desk or, or do interviews, that kind of stuff. People like, women like these, like a lot of them, like when I look at like Condoleezza Rice, I I just imagine them with like, you know, behind closed doors, it's them with like whipping chain, hang, you know, with their husband or whatever, beating not, the crap out. Not necessarily. Only those people whose programming is related to sexual activity would be involved in that kind of stuff. Because I know those yes, types... The guy that mm-hmm. wants to stock the shelf mm-hmm. is is matched by a Condoleezza Rice who wants to rule the world, basically, <laughs> you know, as Secretary of State. Uh, and and they're all basically marked with a, a symbol. Condoleezza Rice, I seem to remember, has the space between her teeth, which is... Uh, <laughs> basically the mark of a presenter or a person that sells to the public, yeah. uh, whereas the, the guy that stocked the shelf has Down syndrome appearances. Because so. uh, those people who are like that, they're sexually like that, those people are effective 
and like torturing people because they get a kick out of it, and only yeah. people who enjoy it can do the that. Sim- the symbolism of that is mm-hmm. the crown of thorns mm-hmm. put on the head of the person being crucified. Mm-hmm. That's that's the symbolism of politics, media, mm-hmm. education, mm-hmm. Uh, comedy shows, Hollywood. You know, all of these things are different thorns that are in your head, and they are basically uh, affecting your thought processes. While marriage is basically a nail in the feet. Mm-hmm. Uh, forcing two people to uh, share the same podium and and not be themselves, but try to compromise con- constantly uh, at a point in the middle, which means that neither the partner, male or female, uh, is in fact ever allowed to be themselves. Yeah, it, it, um, it seems like the only type of person I think would really enjoy a marriage is a wee man because it gives more it seems I don't know it seems like they have more power in that type of situation well it's the difference in training the the clan mother was basically uh, programmed by creation Mm -hmm. to be a procreator of life Mm -hmm. whereas the wee man was programmed as a geisha or uh, a harem girl so that uh, during the day they would be mild and at night they would be wild. And all that requires is the flipping of one letter uh, in the dictionary and you go from mild to wild. So, so when you say clan mother, do you mean after genetic engineering or before genetic engineering? Or the original were... clan mothers. Oh, the after when they were separated. After yeah, the that genders? that that basically retained the task of of running the clan and being the judges and and the philosophers, while the men were basically building the cabins and and going hunting and that kind of stuff. Do you think, um, like, how do you think that society was with clan, the clan mother? And uh, well, I think it was a step in a process. I mean, with both the hermaphrodite and and the yeah. the end products of after genetic, like them I, living I don't together. think that uh, creation uh, intended to keep clan mothers as hermaphrodite forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't believe that it's the acts done by creator mm-hmm. that are the problem. Not all animals in the planet start off as a method, like, do they? Well, it depends on how close they can get to a potential partner. Mm. If if you're in the ground as a worm, mm-hmm. like the flatworm is, the chance of finding a partner is... is uh, limited, to mm. say the least. So the animal must be a hermaphrodite. The same thing when you first start putting human beings on the planet, their chance of finding another human being was not very good, so the the person had to be a hermaphrodite. But creation had a plan mm-hmm. for when this uh, separation of the genders should take place, and what would be the outcome of that was all written in its original plan. Then you get creator, which is one of the animals made by creation, who then goes through a cataclysmic experience that gives him access to uh, the knowledge of DNA and that division and that kind of stuff, and he then uses it, this knowledge, to, um, in fact, hijack the the plan from creation mm-hmm. to use it f- 
for himself as a control freak. And what he does by doing that um, could be very close to what creation had intended. The difference is the timing. Yeah. He does it at a wrong time, makes changes happen at the wrong time, and that basically sets the plan of creator on a path that is diverging from the original plan every single moment of every day. It's like an angle starting at a corner and going off and if creation had a plan that was 90 degrees and creator steps in and makes a plan at 45 degrees, then over time the problem gets worse and worse and worse. We are now arriving at the point in time, the very, very specific point in time that creation had decided on before it even created the Big Bang. At this point, a decision must be made. Have I absorbed enough uh, information from the experiences of people who live within this creation of mine we'll call the solar system and the universe, and do I allow it to destroy itself? Or is there any evidence that this is something worth keeping? It may not be the final product that mm -hmm. we want, but in the end, it's something that should be like information stored by DNA in the spine. This way of doing things is worth remembering and storing. And and when you're talking about that concept, you're talking about moving from third dimension to fourth dimension, where time plays a role, not simply uh, three-dimensional uh, length, width, height type of thing, but also time. So we have arrived at that time. If creation were to decide, let them destroy themselves, mm -hmm. he just lets the process continue, and uh, we will not take the proper action to put the timing back in place, and the eternity we live in will expand until it destroys itself. If, on the other hand, we are able to get back on track with creation's original plan. Mm -hmm. We are leveling out and going through a period of transition, which will then start to shut down to a singularity, or some people would rather call it a seed, mm -hmm. for the next eternity. And it will then be part of the intuition of those animals that will continue the process in a future parallel type universe that would happen mm -hmm. at a different place in time. The shape of that is important for people to realize it's like the structure of a barrel, and, and understanding it is not sufficient. You must, in fact, absorb the concept and make it part of everything your intuition tells you mm -hmm. and, and work towards that happening. Now, we know that creator is not a single person, but a, a conglomerate of a number of persons who got their brains tied together and made decisions on our behalf. Mm -hmm. For that to happen, there had to be an original critical mass uh, of 13 people, I suggest, who, who wanted that to happen. And today, what we need 
is a uh, competitive 13 person critical mass to try to move the thought processes of the universe away from the control of creator, the hijacker, back to creation, the fabricator and manufacturer of DNA. And we only have a window of opportunity to do that in, and if we don't get it done within that window, you don't have to to uh, uh, worry about them going out and screwing up eternity. They're just going to be destroyed mm-hmm. through the actions of their own folly. Uh, I mean, they've already been... It will take care of itself. Yeah, they've already... I've been partly destroyed. Yeah, they've put everything in motion, uh, and and unless some change occurs, we're now going to expand till there is no eternity here, no universe. It will have been an experiment, interesting mm-hmm. experiment, some lessons learned, but not something you want to carry through mm-hmm. to the next step. Those people who would like to go to the next step have an opportunity to to participate in in that movement back to the original plan of creation. And uh, I invite them to come and participate. Um, I still have my... Uh... My RSVP here. Yeah. <laughs> well, you will know, and and things will be made possible when the time for you is right. Mm-hmm. And it's it, the timing is different for each individual based upon the circumstances put in front of them uh, at any given moment. Some people want to move forward and can't. We call those broken wings. Other people uh, don't want to move and have the circumstances that would allow them to move. You call those ostriches? Uh, Yeah, ostrich would be a good name for them. They would rather have their head in the sand than wait for a kick in the ass. And the people that want to move... Uh, and can, or what do you call those, the seagulls? Yeah, the yeah. Well, they, they are people um, who need assistance, like a uh, bird with a broken wing could use the help of somebody who comes and, and uh, puts some kind of brace on their wing and allows it to heal, and that's what I'm trying to do. Mm. Well, I, 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 I've seen that. I, you know, I've concluded that a while ago. You know, I, it, you're helping um, activate something that's already there. Yeah. The, part of fixing a broken wing is providing people words for things they already know. Yeah. Uh, at one end of the line... And at the other end of the line, it's providing resources for yeah. those people who who want to know. Sometimes I can't find the words. You know what it is? I've noticed them. Um, like when I try to explain it, I, I, the the further d- deeper I, I get in, like I find myself trying to go back to what I've learned long ago, and I can't find the words sometimes because because I'm because my mindset is somewhere else now it's it's yeah. it's well, cause I'm learning new things and it 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 basically <laughs> is telling you that the actual role you need to play is more narrowly defined than how you're trying to use it so don't feel badly about it, just work out exactly where you fit in this communications 
to other people. Mm. There, there is for every human being the talent already inside of them that will allow them to do what they really would be good at mm -hmm. and can do well, and it's only a matter of extracting that talent and realizing one has it, and it's different for each person. Like I, I, like I think about like, like how you helped me over the last year, yeah. past year. Like, you really have you have that patience. You do that with a lot of people. I hope so. Like because but I don't, I don't do it with everybody. Yeah. Uh, knowing that my uh, energy is limited and it's it's less and less with every year that passes. Yeah. Uh, I, I will not allow myself to be used for the purpose of wasting mm -hmm. my time. Mm -hmm. And I get phone calls from people uh, obviously hoping to waste my time. Mm -hmm. uh, usually there are people who have an anti-Semite bent. Oh, yeah, I heard that one. Or they have a... Um, uh, racial bent to what they're mm -hmm. saying, yeah. and and I will make the point with them from the beginning mm -hmm. that uh, uh, there's no such thing as a person different from you, since we all come from the same place. Yeah. There's only uh, differences due to the assigned task. Mm -hmm. Different and programs. the geographic location, uh, and and therefore that's a program, and it has nothing to do with the individual. The basic individual, the structure of the person, male, female, white, black, red, mm -hmm. brown, whatever, is all from the same origin. So get off that kit. That's a media created. Uh, instrument for wasting time. That's and, basic. <laughs> and when they don't realize it, I tell them off and I hang up. Yeah. yeah. Part of the reason they don't realize it because the ego won't let them realize it. Mm -hmm. That's part of that control mechanism. Yeah. It seems so like how the ego can uh, work so well with the media. Yeah. <laughs> it's not an accident that the word regal mm -hmm. is three, is, uh, uh, one fourth more than the word ego, yeah. and and ego is in the present, where rego means go back, yeah. go back in time, <laughs> study how you got here. Mm -hmm. you know? and if you study how you got here, you won't allow them to do the things they try to force you to do. Yeah, because people are basically working with no. Foundation you need to go back and see how things were. Well, they'll, they'll tell us things like "go back in in black," basically mean go back to becoming uh, a black African. But that's not what creation intended by the concept of ego. Creation intended go back to the place where your brain worked. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're in the place where the brain works, it understands that it has to overstand. And, the and to overstand, mm -hmm. it has to bring in the tools necessary to do the job. Mm. And reason, otherwise known as intelligence, is not sufficient. It's a part of the, mm -hmm. the toolbox you have. But intuition is as important as reason because it's your background material and it tells you where you've been. Your reason tells you where you are and your hopes uh, for the future tells you where you're attempting to go. But until you have access to that intuition added to your reasoning, 
you're you're just a a boat floating on the water. You may as well consider the poem "Rub a Dub Dub Three Men in a Tub" having <laughs> been written exactly for you. That's, How could we, mm-hmm. that's what that person would be just bobbing on the water. <laughs> How creation like knows the perfect timing. There was no way Creator could have found that out, right? The perfect no. time. So it's no Creator basically has stolen uh, a toolbox, the screws, nuts and bolts, and and springs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But that's not what makes a Maserati function. It's a little piece of rubber called the <laughs> timing belt. <laughs> and unless you have that timing belt, mm-hmm. the rest of it is is just making statues. Mm-hmm. It's not making the proper vehicle, and it cannot go down the path you want it to go. And creation has retained that timing belt Mm. And it is is basically what scientists are looking for today, which is linked to gravity mm-hmm. and how gravity changed at the first instance following the Big Bang. Mm-hmm. And unless they have that, they cannot have a unified theory of the universe and therefore don't know about the transition point and what needs to be done when. The creator is just imposing its will uh, for the purpose of control without having any access to this timing belt. So, And we are the timing belt. Those people who can create a critical mass are basically the timing belt. I liked how you said before, and you said that uh, creation basically made DNA as a tool to so it could retrieve information. Something like that was so it could retrieve information and bring it, you know, from the universe. Well, it, it, it it's like a hologram. Yeah. It's a contains like a seed. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you can take a seed, put it in a in a jar, and put it on a shelf. Nothing will happen. It's information in that thing. Yeah. But it has all the information, yeah. and what it requires okay, is so. the addition of chemistry mm-hmm. and electricity in mm-hmm. the proper combination. And it then basically is jump started as a plant or a person or an animal, and it grows back to where it can then make more of these uh, seeds, which we call stem cells. That's why I, I look at DNA like I just look at it all like the universe is just like. It's something that creation knows how to read. That's why, like, when you see, um, like, during the summer, it rains. Or it, certain things that, like, some people can't explain. Like, yeah. it's because it's, like, creation knows to do it because the instructions are there. Sure. So it's just <laughs> it reads it and carries it out. It knows exactly when it's time to add the water. Yeah. It knows when it's time to put it in the land. It knows when it's time to uh, jump start it with uh, the electrical uh, energy of the grass and and uh, material that happened to be around it. It knows how it's strengthened uh, by wind. It knows that the wind can't be constant or it, the plant will bend. It knows how to push and, and then go back and push again and then go back. And during that activity, the plant gets tougher and tougher. 
Yeah. And it's the same thing with people. The activities that occur uh, are basically going to knock them over or make them stronger. That's our role. And Jared, I, I have to prepare my uh, day for tomorrow. Uh, I just want to say something, um, two things. In the beginning, I thought genetic engineering, I didn't think it would be that like bad of a thing because it, it could be, I thought it could be used as a tool, you know, but now it seems like it puts everything out of whack with timing. Yeah, well, uh, both are true. It can be used mm -hmm. as long as it's used within the right context and at the right time. Yeah. Nothing wrong mm -hmm. with genetic engineering any more than there's anything wrong with a pill. Yeah. The, the problem is the the cocktail and the dose <laughs> has to be yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. exactly, exactly. And, and, yeah, and, and another thing with the whole thing with the flood, um, do you think people in the military industrial uh, complex will survive? Because they have submarines that could probably withstand. What's, you know, no, yeah. because when you go through a nova, no. the, the sea doesn't exist in the same manner during the process of creating a nova. No. Mountains fall over. The earth mixes in with the water. Oh, it's become sand, right? And becomes okay. like quicksand. So ships don't move around under those conditions. You you then have to wait again for the time where the sediment works its way down. The oh. water rises to the top, and you recreate the conditions you had before, where all of the ocean of the world would be fresh water because there is no life left on the surface to add salt, and the process begins by creating life in fresh water, and then that life dies and adds salt to the water, and the seas begin to change, and they get to the point where uh, there has to be a balance maintained and the pressure of the water oceans pushes the salt down to the bottom. So that moho... Just, always keeping a constant there. So, so the moho, would, that would be destroyed, but the material, what's that material, the upper mantle, what is that made of? Is well, this, the moho is basalt. Uh-huh, yeah, that's made from... Which is basically... Uh, everything they call schema... Yeah. It's it's basically a hardened version it's of our salt. friends from the from the it's yeah. it's it's um it's our friends from the top to the bottom. Yeah. And and below it is is an iron based mantle. Iron. And uh inside that mantle is a is a kitchen. Oh, okay. An oven that that basically receives material from above and recombines it and shoots it back out as a volcano. So the beginning of life comes with lava, and only what the lava brings out can be made unless, of course, it gets added information to it that did not exist before. And that's where the concept of aliens came into the story they made up for us. The alien aspect of it is a comet. Or a meteor, yeah, oh yeah, because it came from... Okay. Coming from outside the solar system yeah, yeah. and bringing the potential of some material, some elements which we did not have here before, which meant that certain things could live, but other things could not be created, but once you add the material from the meteorite or the, the comet, then, then new things can live, and some things that live can no longer live. And that's 
the process of evolution uh, in its uh, uh, surges. Evolution is a slow changing thing that is almost invisible and at every period in time a cataclysmic event changes things dramatically and that cataclysmic event that changes things dramatically would be the addition of material that was not here prior to that and the likelihood of that uh, is that it comes as a comet from the Oort cloud. So the the persons that hijack creation want to know more about the beginning of time, and they've decided that investigating the Oort cloud would be the quickest way to go. Don't wait for a comet to come here go find out what they're made of uh, out there. And therefore, they assigned Caucasians the task of getting to the Yurt cloud, and then they'd take over again and, and do it themselves. And that's basically the stage we're at now. But that that is is so fractional a concept of knowledge Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it's related strictly to this solar system, whereas the universe is so much bigger and so much <laughs> complex. But that's the, but you got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's why creation set timing mm. down for knowledge to be learned in a timely manner to be beneficial to the people that would be the result of its creation and not in a timely manner to be beneficial to a small group of hijackers. So we're we're faced with the dilemma that uh, um, we wouldn't mind if creation destroyed the dummies but unfortunately, the way creation operates, uh, we would all be going at the same time. Uh, but it's all who gets remembered. Yeah. That's what really counts, right? I beg your pardon? It's all it's, it's who, who's remembered with creation. Yeah. That's what really matters. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what we have to deal with, and we have to hope that out of the people whose minds were programmed in the past, sufficient numbers come forward and and help on changing the timing. And those who feel they are not uh, equipped to to help actually do the the task of changing the timing, well, they can support in other ways. They can they can support through resources needed to do the job. And money is only one resource. Goods and services are of equal value. Gotta go now. Okay, go ahead. Nice talking. Again. All right. Bye.